pound for pound sports entertainment hit the like button comment below share do all of that hit the subscribe button you see who we got man one of the best bare knuckle fighters of all time you can't beat him you can only hope to contain him you know you when you say his name you got to put some respect on him you know what i'm saying the double champ the champ champ the man lorenzo the juggernaut hunt what's going on champ thanks man thanks for the live introduction man um you know I'm kicking it. I'm chilling. I'm celebrating. I'm, 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 um, I'm enjoying being on top. Uh, I fought so hard for so long, and I ain't gonna lie to you. The hardest thing is convincing people that you are what you say you are. Mm -hmm. But when you stop talking, you start doing. The shit, the shit will work itself out. Absolutely. Um, congratulations on your recent victory over Chris Camozzi at BKFC 50. Oh man, it was a great performance. Um, what grade would you give yourself for that performance and why? Oh, that was the A plus. You know what I'm saying? That was the A plus. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna release a video in a little while that explains why I believe it was an A plus. Um, in short, I mapped that fight out play by play before I ever entered the ring. And most times I do. Uh, even the knockout that took Mike Richmond out, that was plain. Um, a lot of the times you guys watch me and you might look like, oh, I'm in trouble. Or you may think that, oh, this guy's doing this or this guy's doing that. Even if I told you before the fight, I said, I'm gonna make him look like, I'm gonna make it look like he's winning. And then I'm gonna knock him out. You still would be surprised <laughs> when I mm -hmm. knock him out. <laughs> And I'm like, man, listen, I don't hide nothing. Like I, I, I put all my stuff on the internet. I'm on live when I'm training. I'm not hiding how I'm training. I'm not hiding no secret tactics. I sell videos to show you what I'm gonna do to you. I tell them before I get there what I'm gonna do to them. I, I told them exactly. If you go listen, go listen to the um, the uh, road to BKFC, the the cuts with me and Chris Camozzi. I mm -hmm. told him exactly what I was going to do to him. I told him exactly what he was going to do. I said he was going to grab me and try to sweat on me and push me around. But it ain't going to work because he don't know how strong I am yet. I told him the whole world exactly. The truth is easy. And I just feed them the truth until they sick of it. Stuff it down their throat. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of performances, first of all, man, salute to you for performing LL Cool J's Mama Said Knock You so Out There in the Ring Wall. Oh, that man. Was what, so fire. It was fire. What made you decide to choose that song and, and perform that as your ring wall? Well, um, people don't know that LL Cool J's great, great, great grandfather was the first bare knuckle world champ, black bare knuckle world champ. And I learned that watching the podcast with him and Mike Tyson when they did the Ancestry, he was explaining the Ancestry.com. Well, while I'm sitting here with the Police Gazette Diamond Belt, while Mike Tyson get emotional explaining to LL Cool J that he was denied his, his belt, they hit him over the head with an iron pipe and didn't give him the belt even after he mm -hmm. beat, even after he beat the guy. Um, well, I reached out to some people and after going on to the Math Hoffa show and uh, we reached out to LL, you know, I, I I felt that. I felt that. Imagine me doing all of this and being denied. You know, I've been denied quite a few times. Imagine freeing yourself from the bonds of slavery, whooping ass <laughs> in those days and then being denied the world uh, title because you black. So I reached out to LL Cool J and I wanted him to have my, my belt. I wanted him to have the belt that his great, great grandfather was denied. Cause I'm sitting with it. It's right here. You know what I mean? Right here. 125 years later, a black man <laughs> gets the world uh, Police Gazette diamond belt. Mm -hmm. I got it. I'm the first one to get it in 125 years after that madness happened. You get it? Uh, so I felt it. And most people don't know, you know, most people don't know the intricacies or the details or most people don't care. But now that the sport's been legalized again, I believe that it's important that we write 
some of those wrong. Mm -hmm. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yes, and sir. Making history, and LL knew exactly what I was doing when he when he when that when I called, he knew exactly what it was. I was like, yeah, I got the belt. Now, come on, we wrote we wrote his family name on it and everything, man. And we and we and we did a little thing where we presented it to him. We put it in a case for him, and we put his we put his great grandfather on there, you know, with his dukes mm -hmm. up, and it was lit, man. And so I performed. Mama said, "Knock you out," because LL was saying, you know, he knew it always in his heart it was a spirit the spirit of a fighter he always felt he felt it inside him i'm the same way you know what mm -hmm. i mean i don't know all of my history i don't know all of my lineage but i know i know what's in me it's a it's a it's a it's a blood fight it's a it's a deep ingrained fight in me you know what i mean mm -hmm. i know I, I had a couple uncles that was boxers my father uh did martial arts my 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 uncle did martial arts, but I'm talking deeper than that. I'm talking spiritual, you know, deep, way deep rooted, like on the battlefield type shit. I know it's there, and um, I use it. So I wanted to um to pay homage to LL, and then Mama said, "Knock you!" I was so perfect. If you listen to the lyrics, it's like he wrote it about me. Listen to the lyrics. Every word it was about exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I just, I just was like, wow, you know, it, it couldn't, it couldn't have came out more perfect. Absolutely. Um, training in Colorado. I seen footage of you training on top of a mountain for this fight. How high were you up, and what made you decide to spar once you got to the top? Well, it was fourteen thousand feet, and I don't know if you guys know this, but I believe every word that I say. When I say I, I. I will beat you underwater. I will beat you on top of a mountain. I will beat you in Africa. I will beat you in Asia. These dudes try to run me to their home when they want to fight at home and they thinking that they're going to have the home field advantage that maybe I can't breathe. This is my third time, fourth time fighting at, at altitude. It don't give them an advantage. It makes me worse. It makes me worse. The fights at altitude that I had was Robert Brown, um, um, Joe Riggs, Mike mm -hmm. Richmond, Mike Richmond, and um, and Chris Camozzi. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't. That wasn't an advantage for you guys. But they keep thinking, oh, we got to think of a way to beat him. We got to think of a way to beat him. Think of another way. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Cause I, I will, bro. Listen, I will put a bag over my head and train. If I thought that breathing was gonna be an issue, I'll figure out how to beat that ass without breathing. Mm -hmm. That's what it all. That's what it's about. That's the fight. It's it's we we. It's a real fight for me. It might be a sport for these dudes. If you didn't notice, Chris Camozzi, it looked like he wasn't prepared to 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 die in there like he said he was. Mm. He said in interview. He said I will. I'm willing to die to be a world champion. I thought to myself, like, well, if you die, you still won't be the world champion. I said it. Man. It'll still be mine. It's coming home with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's all about where you're willing to go, what you're willing to do. And I and I and I'm telling you, they just ain't figured it out yet. Where I'm willing to go and what I'm willing to do far supersedes anything that y'all dudes is willing to do for for this, you know. And then, Absolutely. Like, no, and and it shows. The proof is in the pudding. Perfect. Um, we see you sparring some notable names like Isaac Doolittle and Mike Perry, just to name a few. Um, how how important is it picking the right sparring partners for training camp? It means nothing. I learned the most. I learned the most when I'm sparring with children, when I'm sparring with novice, when I'm sparring with people who who don't know nothing. Um, the element of fear is in the building when someone who doesn't know boxing or doesn't know it's a sport or hasn't been taught it's a game. You get it? They're not playing tag. They're in fear for their life. The punches that they're throwing are wild and unmappable, and that's when you learn the most when it's unpredictable. Mm. Before before traditional 
um, fighting ties your shoes together and teach you how to walk and teach you how to talk and teach you how to move and teach you how to get knocked out. That's when you're the truest you'll ever be is before anybody trains you into moving a, a certain weird way. So when I get in there with women, when I when I when I train with women and they get mad and they start swinging wild ass punches, when I train children and they and they just go for what they know, that's when I learn the most. Sparring with guys like Mike Perry and Doolittle and and, and Alex Nicholson and them guys, those, those are the easy days. Mm. You know what I mean? I already know what you're gonna do. I know exactly what you're gonna do. That's interesting, man. That's a, yeah. that's a good no take surprise. right there. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no surprises. I like to fight with the guys who, who, who wild and scared. And they, don't, they don't know what to do. They just, you know, they just going hard. Mm -hmm. That's what you learn the most. Okay. Man, heavyweight division. Do you still want to take over a heavy, heavyweight division and become BKFC's first three division champion? Man, the heavyweight division is a walk in the park for me. A walk in the park. It's not like I'm going... If you noticed, I'm not going from from hard from 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 easiest to hardest. I'm going from hardest to easiest. You saw that shit with me and Mike Richmond. Was yes. that the easiest division? The 185 was that the easiest? That yes. is the easiest. It gets easier as they get bigger. Mm -hmm. And and they know it. David Feldman knows it. The heavyweights know it. Arnold Adam knows it. After fighting with them guys, just think about it in your own mind. The roughest, toughest dudes you know are not the biggest ones. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. The dudes you know in your hood that did the most dirt, that did the most wild shit, that is the baddest dude, is not the biggest dude. The biggest dudes are the softest. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm going to the heavyweight division. Because they soft as hell. They don't even got to make weight. They don't even got to train hard. Yeah. They right. think it's easy because they big, bro. When they let me, when they open the door, they will regret it. <clears throat> uh, what went through your mind when you heard the now uh, former heavyweight champion, Alan Belcher, was stripped of his title? And why didn't that fight happen between y'all? Because he ran. He ran out the building when I challenged him. That was the next move. That was it. That was it. This whole Chris Camozzi debacle and two and old guy that I wind up having to fight because Alan Belcher bailed. He put it on his Instagram. He said, "We'll see how you do after after you fight Chris Camozzi. Then maybe I'll fight." He ran. It was the only place to go. David Feldman and, and, and Triller put so much pressure on them him to fight me. He couldn't mm -hmm. fight. He couldn't fight um um Big Ben, Ben Rothwell, because they couldn't agree on the weight. They said, "Well, Lorenzo's waiting for you." Remember when he beat on Adams? I was standing there in the ring, mm -hmm. eating thicken. I was standing right there. He looked at me. He was terrified. <laughs> Bro, he ran. He 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 didn't want to. He didn't want to succumb to that pressure of 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 David Feldman forcing him to fight me. Mm -hmm. They couldn't reach an agreement. It was fight. It was fight, fight, fight Ben at any weight. Because Ben ain't willing to come down to 165 or fight Lorenzo, who is on a terror. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, he couldn't decide. So he left. And then he went and fought um the kid uh uh in boxing. Uh some uh, uh I get it. How, how, was it Ryman Jr.? No, he was supposed to fight him, but he dropped out and he wound up yeah. fighting. Um, he wound up fighting the other kid, the light skinned kid, the football player that never had a fight. Mm. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. um, and then he runs over the game bread. Now he's got to fight. Now he's just jumping around trying to run anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere, but here. But it's okay because he'll get pressed. They'll get sick of him. Either he'll get beat. Or he'll get pressed for some money. And when he comes back, just like I told you, Helio, I'll be the king of the mountain. You'll be asking me for a fight. Mm -hmm. You'll be begging. You'll come back begging. You'll be like, fight me, fight me. 
it's just, it's just a fact. When when Allen Belcher comes back to BKFC, I'll be the heavyweight champ. Mm. Okay. Fact. Who can stop me? Arnold Adams? No. The the dude the dude from Britain, the dude that Arnold's supposed to fight? No. That's a bro. They just gonna cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. Um um, the, the dude can't beat me. Neither one of them can. You saw their last fight. They already fought each other. Mm -hmm. Um um, the the two dudes that's fighting for the vacant title right now. Um, Arno Adams and um, I keep forgetting his name. They fought back in um, they fought in Tampa, and it was Please. the sloppiest shit I ever seen. What? Well, why? How come they're not making? Was it Arnold Adams and Rothwell? They might as well just made that fight. Cause man, I don't know what's going on with Ben, but they're 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 putting Ben against an against the cuddly bear dude for like the title eliminator or something, or Ben against some other big fat dudes. He. The thing about the matchmakers and the and the promotion, they match guys up like based on size and weight, not necessarily skill. How could you? How could you how could you match guys based on skill if you never fought? You have mm. no skill. You're not a fighter. Nation's not a fighter. The guys mm. just make these matches, they're just matching up sumo wrestlers, thinking, oh, this is a big guy, that's a big guy, maybe that'll work. See all the shit didn't work. You saw what happened with Greg Hardy. Yeah, yeah. And look at that guy. Be like, oh, he's really big. He should be tough. Nope. You can slap him. He'll fall out. And then he's so big he can't even get up. Yeah. That's all it is. The bigger they are, the longer it takes for him to get up. Basically. You Basically. can just trip him. You can just trip him and just watch him struggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, we seen you at 185. We seen you at 205. But can you describe what a heavyweight version of Lorenzo Hunt's gonna look like? You looking at it? Let me take my. Shot. I'm 233 right now. I wouldn't. Damn. 233. I'm 233 all the time. Okay. All the Damn. time. This is always me. This has been me. You know what I'm saying? I was 205 in high school. It's the hardest thing in my life to make 185. And they knew it. That's why Mike Richmond was like, he's not going to make weight. He's not going to make weight. He was praying. But I'm the most disciplined person you'll ever meet in your life, besides my father. If mm -hmm. I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I did it. I was 185 exactly mm -hmm. for my last fight. They say, oh, you got to be 205. I was 204.9. <laughs> Come on. That's a serious dude right there. You got to pay attention. Like, 204.9? Who does that? Mm -hmm. He does. He does. I ain't giving you a penny. More than you something. <laughs> Not a penny. Not a penny. Damn. Not a penny more than you're supposed to get. Uh, hey, you, you got finger kind of blocking the camera a little bit. Oh, my bad. You good? You good? Uh, to, to, to. Oh, yeah. what so, like, when it come to when it come to being what I perceived, what I perceive as the best in the world, and what that means, that means that my skill transcends any weight class any weight classification if if somebody walked up to me right now and start popping flyers trying to push me around do you think i will pull out a scale and try to weigh him before i beat his ass absolutely not so that's unrealistic it's un yeah. i don't even think about it i didn't care how much chris kamozi weighed the night of the fight he could have been 240 he could have been 280 out of beat him up. It don't matter. And he probably was 240. He was huge. Don't matter. Your teeth ain't gain no weight. Your lips ain't gain no weight. That yep. eye ain't gain no weight. Yep. It is what it is. I told you people people think strength come is something it's not. You know what I mean, you could you could suck down all the protein and, and eat all the steaks in the world. I, you could, it don't mean nothing when it when it's a fight. Absolutely, it don't, it don't mean nothing. 
Didn't mean nothing to Bruce Lee. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Didn't mean You're right. not a thing. Uh, who were some of your favorite BKFC fighters to watch? Reggie Barnett. I don't know if y'all ever watched, kind of just watched them fights over again. Mm-hmm. It's a clinic the way he moves. He he is terrifying. I'm I'm kind of calm. <laughs> he mm-hmm. is terrifying. Elvin Brito. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. That's rough. Um, the boy uh Davis. Uh, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, nice and sharp. I just wish I had a little time with him. I teach him how to hit and not and not hurt himself. It's mm-hmm. a way you hit. And not break your own shit. That's important. See, I ain't never broke nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've been in there the most out of anybody. I ain't never broke nothing. So that means there's something to it. It's a way to do it. You know, you ain't you ain't just you you don't you don't um destroy your tools in order to get the job done. Cause I got more mm-hmm. work. To do, you know, um, um, yeah, just to name a few, um. Them, them, them kind of the top dudes who, to me, who look like they know what they're doing. You know, Christine Ferreira, mm-hmm. you can tell there's a gap, a large gap in not just the efficiency, not just in the strikes, but in the in the understanding of what's happening in the ring, placement, judges. I've watched Reggie Barnett grab guys, take them over to the judges and beat them up right in front of the <laughs> You can see it. He's looking for him. He's like, okay, yeah, we're going over there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There, there's there's some people who know what they're doing. And then there's other people who are just swinging and hoping and praying. Um, To me, it's like playing pool. You ever seen a person who really knows what he's doing play pool? You don't stand a chance in hell. Not a chance. Nope. Not a chance. Ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> They know every square inch of that table, every the angles, everything. Inch, every angle is magic. And that's what it's like in there with me. And if mm-hmm. you think it's not, just go watch Watch me and Josh Dyer. He never mm-hmm. had a chance, not even close. Some of these fights, the boy ain't even hit me. Um, 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 even Chris Camozzi, he barely touched me. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be the biggest, baddest, hardest fight of all. Barely even touched me, head butted me. That's how he bust my lip. Mm-hmm. And half the blood that was on me was his. The blood that was on me was his. You had a cut I, on the top of his head or something. Yeah, when I wiped my eye, it really pissed me off because he head butted me. And then I wiped my eye and I saw a bunch of blood. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't mine, it was his. But I was like, oh, I'm I'm really going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, That's these dudes don't know what they're doing. You could tell when you watch the fight. He did not know what he was doing. Mm-hmm. He didn't know what he was doing. Absolutely. And somebody said something about a rematch. For what? Did you let that weird judge that that gave Chris Camozzi the fight uh uh convince you that we should do that we should do it again? Cause this is just a free check for me. A mm. free check. Chris Camozzi, a free check. He was in there the whole time trying not to get knocked out. That's all. That was his whole goal. He just was like, I'm going to be the only one that doesn't get knocked out by the juggernaut. You can see it in his face. He ran the whole time. We had a mutual um, a mutual agreement. <laughs> he was like, don't knock me out, okay? And I was like, <laughs> hey, your ass over there, dude. <laughs> 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 David Feldman's banging on the ring. He's like, come on. I'm like, he don't want it. Mm-hmm. They was booing. They wasn't booing me. You booing him. Yeah, he sold all them damn tickets. He sold all them <laughs> wolf tickets. Damn. Got booed at home, man. That's crazy. Yeah, he got booed at home. Uh, BKFC prospects. What's your thoughts on the BKFC prospect series, and what advice do you have for the prospects looking to get a contract? Um, 
I'll say to the kids out here looking to get in the in the, in the um in the game, you know, everything that I do, I do it as if there's nothing else in the world. I put myself on airplane mode and I totally commit. That means if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a fighter, it becomes me. It becomes me. It's everything. It's every day, every show that I watch, everything that I eat, everything that I am, everything that I talk about, that's it. Ain't nothing else. If you're not that committed, come on, man. Do something else because you're just going to get hurt. And somebody's got to get hurt. That's the way the game goes. Somebody's got to get hurt. And it's going to be whosoever is not fully committed. Hmm. Right? That's just the truth. Like, don't you can't split yourself and be the best boyfriend in the world. You can't be the best, the best guy at your job and the best fighter and the best. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Your shit got to be lopsided. One of your arms going to become real big like a lobster. You got to be totally committed. Um, and, and the most part, you might even become useless in every other part of society, but you will be a great fighter. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got to be dedicated. Like that. You have to be willing to cut cut your, cut yourself off from everything else and become if that's what you want if that's who you are then it won't be a problem for you but if you a people pleaser and if you running around trying to make everybody happy bro you're going you're going you going to get yourself hurt you get mm-hmm. yourself hurt bad you know what i mean and i saw that too that was that was another thing with chris Camozzi. you couldn't see that you couldn't see that in his face you couldn't see that he, he had somewhere else to be. Mm. Hell, he had a podcast to run. He got some 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 people to please. He got a model girlfriend. He got a wedding to go to. All of that's running through your mind when you in there. When I'm trying to fuck up your face. Mm-hmm. And you got you got you got a tux ironed out on the on the bed. Bruh. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this ain't the movies. Mm-hmm. Nah, this ain't the movies, man. You can't have it all. You gotta pick. I I made my choice. Absolutely. Uh Bryce Hall. You recently trained the social media star Bryce Hall for his fight against Cutman G Perez at BKFC 48. How was that experience training him? And do you see yourself becoming a trainer in the near future? I've been a trainer. I've been training guys the whole time. I've been training a lot of the fighters that you know and love. Mm-hmm. I trained Action J. Action Jackson. I helped train Mike Perry when he fought um Mike Benham Page. Mm-hmm. I trained um shit. I trained Julian Lane when he fought Mike Perry. I trained, mm-hmm. I've been training the whole time. I trained um I trained uh Britton Hart when she fought Christina, even though Whatever. I did my part. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. Um, I've been training guys the whole time I've been a trainer. The Bri- which is why I got the call for Bryce Hall. That's why... Oh, shit, I'm covering the camera again. That's why, I got, that's why I got the call for Bryce Hall, because I'm a good trainer. I've had my own gym. Um, I had my other gym for two and a half years, and I opened this gym because I'm good at training people. I trained Rynell Riley for his last fight. I train most, a lot of the guys, anybody who got good sense is trying to come train with me. So, yeah, I see myself becoming a trainer. I, um, Bryce Hall was actually one of the easiest people to train. He, his teachability index was high as hell. He, 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 he's a genius. You know what I mean? The things that he was picking up, it took years for me to learn, and it take years for other people to pick up. He was picking that shit up in days. I wouldn't be mm. surprised if if he if he don't have a real high IQ. He can do anything. He's like a, you know, yeah, he'll be fine regardless of what he decided to do. And I don't say that about most people. Bryce Hall is a smart ass dude. You get what I'm saying? Some 
things that I was doing, I've taken, like when I take the basketball and I punch it as a speed bag, and then I just mm. hand it to him, and I and he was like, "What?" And I was like, "Dude." About two hours later, he was doing it. He was doing it. It took me months to learn how to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, so there used to be an old saying like they would call a guy a quick study, mm. and he can mimic it. That's how Bryce Hall is. He he's a person that if he sees it done at first, he he won't believe it, but then. If he sees it done, he can do it. So those punches that he was throwing and the, and the energy that he was channeling, he did it. If you look at if you look at the way he won the fight, he did it exactly like I knocked out Eric Lozano. Like mm -hmm. he do it. And then he went and did it. And he did it perfect. He did it perfect. I was like, well, can't argue. <laughs> Go ahead on. So yeah, he's a special case. Um, most people would take takes a lot. This takes a lot more patience and a lot more energy to teach um, some of the tactics that I that I learned and that I can teach and that I can do. You think he's done, or you think he's gonna come back and get oh, another? Oh no, no, that lit a fire in his ass. We're gonna see him real soon. Okay, okay. That, Absolutely. That, that, that kind of bug. That's like that's like drugs. Mm -hmm. You can't just hit that shit and put it down. All his family was there. All the beautiful girls in the building, everybody screaming his name. Oh no, he's hooked. He's hooked. Okay. We'll see him again real soon. No, I don't know when he's coming, but I do know that the the that it's in the works. Okay. I don't know it's in the works. I think he's waiting on the outcome of G um versus uh the guy that he fought before or whatever. But yeah, they're they're trying to get some more social media guys in the um in the mix, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, some influencers. And like I said, putting on a show like that, um, I don't I don't mind it at all. Come with it. Mm. See, I mean, it's, it's gonna expand the brand. It ain't even just that. We all have this uh, this uh this uh this this thing in our head, like. Like fighting should be exclusive to 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 certain people, or that oh, like it's all a form of discrimination. I ain't with none of that. A fight is a fight. A fight is a fight. And if you got that dog in you, if you got that heart in you, and you can, I don't care where you come from, you can overcome. You can make it down the stage without throwing up. All them lights don't bother you, and you can get in the ring and put on a show. Let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm. and, and he brought it. And he put on a show. And he said, man, come on with it. A fight is a fight. Absolutely. A fight is a fight. I say whatever. I say let's see some more. I'm not going to lie. I went to the, was it the Game Bread, Bare Knuckle MMA fight that was here in Jacksonville? I went like, what, yeah. three weeks ago? I got yeah. up in there. All them, them bright lights is on you. You standing there in the middle of everybody. I'm like, yo. Did, I understand how some people fold under the pressure, man. That's it's it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot, lot man. man. So, don't, salute don't to y'all, man. Don't give us enough credit, man. But yeah, it's a lot, man. And you got it's so much in preparation up to the fight. You know, like uh, I I I'm I'm kind of a little bit shy, and my girl she laugh when I say that. Mm -hmm. I be like, I'm a little bit shy. Like when people walk up to me and they want to take pictures with me or they stop me in the grocery store, and I always kind of like look down and then I got to remember, like, oh yeah, that that's me. They be like, is you the dude? And I be like, oh shit, yeah. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like, uh, yeah, it was me. All right, you caught me. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, come on, okay, we'll take a picture and everything. But um, but once the once it's time to go, it's time to go. I don't, Flip that see switch. None of that. I don't see none of that. I don't care about none of that. I ain't on none of that. You can boo. You can cheer. You can throw your draws on the stage. I don't care about none of that. When I get in that ring, <laughs> I got a job to do. And I'm going to do mm -hmm. it. I'm going to do it. I respect that, man. Uh, what message do you have for anyone trying to step up and take your titles from you? Come bring, bring your ass on. I got to eat something. I gotta eat. I I believe in you. I want to say 
all of the, the words of encouragement. I don't want to be a dream killer or none of that. I don't want to scare you away. I just want to say, put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. You got to bring ass to get ass. I'm going to tell you, just like I told Chris Camote, bring it. Mm -hmm. Me first, you, I'm going to take me. I know what I've been through. I know what hell I've survived. I know the mm -hmm. reason I'm so strong. I know what type of strength I possess. I know how deep my faith goes. I know how, <laughs> I know what I believe in. I know exactly who I am. Lord, please don't get in the ring first and then try to find out what you're made of. Mm. That's the advice I'm going to give you. You better know what you are before you get in there with me. Because I'm yes, going to punch it till we find out. <laughs> Who's on your uh, top five BKFC pound for pound list right now? Me. <laughs> obviously, obviously you. We know you. <laughs> well, I, you know, there's always this confusion about me and Palomino about who's the pound for pound. You know what I'm saying? I just thought I just, I just didn't I don't know I don't know if I wasn't a boxing enthusiast or what I just don't think there's any comparison whatsoever between me and Palomino and correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's what pound for pound means mm -hmm. it literally says pound for pound because that means as far as your weight is concerned you're the best mm -hmm. as far as what you can handle but me on the other hand I'm in the divisions above what Palomino can handle. So I'm the best pound for pound champion in my weight classes. Right? Mm -hmm. Period. Number one. Now, Palomino's flawless. He has eight, nine victories. Right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to be, it's hard to be perfect. Like you can't really say shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm 11 and 1. Whatever, whatever. And then, you know, even if even if Trujillo quits his job at Walmart and gets back in the gym and come challenge me and try to and fight me or whatever, when I beat him, when I beat that ass, I'll just be 12 and one. It ain't never going to go away. Mm -hmm. That slip, that bad call from that ref, that terrible call, that terrible stoppage, mm -hmm. it'll never go away. So I'm okay with it. I've made my peace with it. If you go look up the interview, there's an interview with me and Susan Singari. Um, mm -hmm. That night when my lip was split, it wasn't that bad. I did an interview after my fight. She said, I know things didn't go your way, but how you feel about it? I said, you know, the only thing can stop me is an act of God. And if God says, you not winning tonight. Then I'm listening to God. And I'm going to mm -hmm. go where he told me to go. But I'll be back. I'll be back. And I'm going to show you who I am. That's what I said that night. Mm -hmm. I didn't mince words. I didn't hesitate. I was right back in the gym teaching class Monday morning. I was right back on my grind. Right back in the ring a month or two later. I am what I say I am. Now, to yes, Helio, on wherever he's gone, he's doing whatever he's doing. I ain't holding no grudge, but he can't he can't show his face around here no more. Mm. He can't come to this hood. He can't come to the BKFC. Ain't nowhere to go. Not light heavyweight, not cruiserweight, not heavyweight. Ain't nowhere for you to lay your head in my house. Mm. It's for a reason. Yes, sir. So, so, so I'm good. I'm good with it. I made my peace. I'm the best pound for pound champ in the world. I'll be a three division champion. Simultaneous defending three titles. <sighs> Never been another on earth. That's crazy. That's right. crazy. Bro. Right. There's no comparison to me. So top five, me, 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 <laughs> and, and Palomino. <laughs> Four. Me, 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 and Palomino. <laughs> <laughs> but uh when can the fans expect to see you again man i'm trying to get one in before the year out right now i'm free agent so uh i'm in, i'm in negotiations right now with uh 
with uh, a few different promotions and a few different, you know, avenues. Who knows where you're liable to see me next? You know, you might might be liable to see me knocking on Jake Paul's door or Logan or somebody, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who need a who need a thumping and uh and they and they willing to risk it all. <laughs> mm-hmm. But shot hey. at the double world champ. Go get the bag, man. Straight up. Yeah. You ever thought yeah. about uh trying, you know, going going over to do some boxing? Uh, whatever, 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 whoever got the whoever got the biggest bag, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, I'm loyal to BKFC because the BKFC showed me a lot of love, and um, of course, you will see me in the square circle because, like I said, that is my house, but uh, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that I can't box, and that don't mean that I can't um, do other things. So, we're looking for it, we're looking for it right now, absolutely. Um, let the fans know where they can reach you at, champ. Uh, hit me up at the Juggernaut Hunt on Instagram or um, go to my website, www.juggernauthunt.com. Leave me a comment. Check it out. You can go on my website, ask me and sign up where it says train with the champ and come get some lessons in with me at uh, Juggernaut Life uh, Fitness in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I'm I'm doing my thing, man. And it's a beautiful thing. Uh, shout out to No Quarter Combatants uh, for uh, showing me love and looking out for me and helping me with my fight camp. Um, they've been doing a lot to help the fighters uh, get shit right before they fight. Um, shout out to Knockout Canada, um, Venom Drip. Uh, shout out to uh, 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 anybody that I'm forgetting, man. You guys, you know, you know it's all love. Um, Triller, Triller sponsored me on this fight. You know what I mean? They they showed me love. Um, um, bucked up energy drink. You know, yeah, that was the whole bucked up shower was about. That was gangster. Mm-hmm. I had to get. Up some of Chris Camozzi nasty ass magnesium feel blood off of me. You know what I mean? So I use a bucked up energy drink to wash <laughs> it. You know what I mean? It was it was perfect. It was perfect timing. I hate blood. I ain't even people don't even know that. He got that blood on me. I had to get it off. But uh mm-hmm. yeah man, it's all love man. I'm doing my thing. You're gonna see more of me. Um reach out to me. Hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Facebook Lorenzo Hunt. I, I always uh, I always try to reply you know, if you guys are sharing in on my posts, I'll share some of yours. Um, help me get the word out. You know, I'm the, I'm the best in the world, bro. Somebody going to have to risk their risk life to prove me wrong. Absolutely. Fact, like, just come, just try it. You know what I mean? And uh, it might look sweet. You know, I'm, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. You know, I'm not the most intimidating person in the world. Um, I'm light-skinned, you know, that people always think them dudes are soft. Um so yeah, people come and they think they can beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all them teeth marks. That's crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Look, those is Look, it ain't sweet. Wow. It's not sweet, bro. Damn. My bro. my grandma, my grandma once told me uh, I'm going to let you go with this one. My grandma told me when I was little, she said, you got to work hard because when God come, he going to judge a man by his the condition of his hands. Mm. I yeah. know where I'm going. <laughs> 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 I know where I'm going. Uh, Mr. Mr. Lorenzo Hunt, man, we appreciate you for your time, champ. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks for having me, bro. Peace. All right, we're going to let you.